this must be cornerstone to our life. The Sermon on the Mount is the cornerstone of Christian life. It's the foundation. Uh, the Beatitudes are foundation, not just to obey the commandments, but also to experience the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If you're wondering how that connects, please go back. And if you have not looked at it, yeah, because this teaching is, is foundational. And I encourage you that, you know, all your life you keep going back, you keep meditating, you make sure that foundation in every decision, in every way and manner in which you behave. See, uh, I remember the last time mentioning that these are, um, these are um, dispositions. Blessed are the, first one, poor in spirit. Attitude. A, a, a person with that, that attitude of need before God. Uh, that doesn't matter which social strata you're on. When it says blessed are the poor in spirit, it is talking about a man who may be in a mansion, but he has a deep need for God. He says, Lord, I need you. Praise the Lord. It is a, it is a disposition. Yeah. It is a mood. Jesus is interested in your mood. And I want to repeat that and just go, go ahead because it's very important. We think, you know, the area of, uh, uh, of how you are as far as your mood is concerned is your business. No, it's not. We think there's an excuse for, I'm like this. Take it or leave it. Jesus says, no. Husband says, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Jesus says, no. I want to change you. Praise the Lord. He wants to change your mood. There is a mood the Holy Spirit has. Church, sink your teeth into this. Understand. There is a mood the Holy Spirit has. It's a... Uh, it'll set you free. You know, whatever you're facing... The mood you need to take upon yourself is not the humanistic knee, mood. It is the mood of the Holy Spirit. You know, David knew this. That's why he said, take not thy spirit from me. Because he knew that was the mood that he put on when a nation had another mood to face Goliath. So he prayed, take not thy Holy Spirit. Because he knew the Holy Spirit has a mood. And that's where we need to be. There shall be great victory. We also mentioned that these are things that we, we form habits about. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Yeah. Blessed are the gentle. Yeah, these are things that we form habits. You must uh, have a habit of meekness. Jesus is interested in your mood. Don't be a moody person. I'm so tempted to tell you to turn to the person next to you and say, don't be a moody person. And from your reaction, I realize you're just itching to tell people, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't be a moody person. No, no, no. Have the mood of the Holy Spirit. Have the mood of the Holy Spirit. Child, have the mood of the Holy Spirit. Have the mood of the Holy Spirit. It will set your life free. Huh? Men will be like, you know, people will be like, what's going on with this person? The, uh, the, I throw the worst at them, but they're just so stable. I throw the worst at them, but they are so stable. Praise God. They're secure. So connect with the mood of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Whew, it'll make you a great husband. Connect to the mood of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Well, there are so many scriptures to look at. I'm so excited. Would you like to do this for the rest of this year? Some of you already did the calculation. Year's almost over. <laughs> Glory. Glory to God. You know, when you're having a, you know, a, 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 you know if there is a squabble between a husband and wife, if one of them decide to connect with the mood of the Holy Spirit, whew, glory. 
Amen. Make that commitment. One of you decide. The other person might be very emotional at that point. You be connected to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Connected to the Holy Spirit. That will transform the situation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, Jesus is laying the foundation for his disciples. He, he is creating a community, a culture. A culture above all other cultures. He does not care whether you're Malayali, Koleali, whatever you are, it does not matter. Malayali, say amen. amen. Say a strong amen. amen. It doesn't matter where you come from, this is a culture. Wake up. Wake up, wake up. This is a culture. It doesn't matter how your grandfather behaved. It matters how your father in heaven behaves. Amen. Amen. Church, amen. I mean, people will be trying to drop it down your throat that uh, you should be this way, you should be that way. You be like Jesus. Glory. You be like Jesus. Rise above your culture. It's a fallen culture, by the way. American culture is a fallen culture. I want to hear an amen for that. Yes. American culture is a fallen culture. The culture that will last forever is the culture of the kingdom of heaven. And that's what we want to put on. Glory. That's right. Jesus culture. You know, the culture of Christ and the kingdom of God. Amen. That's what you got to long to be like. Yeah, lay aside all the other stuff. Just focus on Jesus. Mm, give me your culture, Lord. And he's desirous to give it. He opens his mouth and he's delivering culture. The culture of heaven. Rise above, rise above. Rise above it. You know, I, I, you know, it may sound a little, but I'm sick and tired of people in the church succumbing to their culture or their father's behavior or their... Mm, Behavior or, or, you know, succumbing to Hollywood culture. Rubbish. We have a culture to succumb to. One we must lay down before and, and uh, ask the Lord, make me like you, make me like you, make me like you. I want the truth, for the truth shall set me free. If the Ten Commandments created the nation of Israel, this is what is the foundation of the church. Every person that enters our community, every person that enters a church or a fellowship must experience these things, must experience a people like this. Glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, we uh, looked at blessed are the gentle for they shall inherit the earth. We, we also considered uh, that psalm in, in scripture as well that expounds on this. Everything is there in, you know, the church website on YouTube. Um, glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I told you, work on your disposition. Yeah, disposition. You should have an inclination towards praise the Lord. You should have an inclination towards praise the Lord. If you feel there's a stigma to it, then that stigma didn't come from God. It came from man and the devil. Praise the Lord does not, is not the language of a particular church. Praise the Lord is the language of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. 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 They're very precious words. Hallelujah. You know, use it um, with reverence. Use it with, with glory. Yeah. Use it with, with joy. Uh, use it realizing when you say praise God. And it's coming from the, 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 the depths of your heart that it comes out of your mouth. Um, you know, I've heard preachers, Pentecostal preachers say it comes out of your mouth like a, like a missile or an, uh, you know, it, it does stuff. Have that disposition. Glory. Glory. 
Praise God. You know, I like that. Let it come out. Praise the Lord. Say it. Say it. You, you look amazing. You look amazing when you say praise the Lord. So I wanted, I wanted you to come out of you. Say praise the Lord. Say it loudly. Say praise the Lord. I don't want the rest of you to say I just want him to say The Lord wants you to say it. Praise the Lord. Get it louder. Say praise the Lord. Say it like you scored a goal. Let's say, I want to turn up the volume. Say, praise God. Praise God. Glory, what a beautiful voice. I think the human tongue achieves its greatest, uh, its, its sonic capacity. It, it reaches its highest, most glorious sonic capacity when it says, praise God. I was expecting all of you to exercise that. Amen. Say, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bible teachers don't, you know, they, they, um, they're not effective if they're not persistent. Suddenly very quiet in here. <laughs> Is that because you didn't get it or it's... <laughs> hmm? Bible teachers, you know, have to be persistent. So if you're coming for this Bible study, as you get ready for the Bible study, tell your spouse, Mole, or whatever you call each other, I don't know what it is. Um, my dear, make sure you say praise God properly. <clears throat> praise the Lord. Glory. Praise the Lord. It's a disposition. It's a disposition. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory. Okay, so... Mm. So I want to read something we had uh, come to uh, last week, uh, something just for you to listen and, and think about it. Biblical meekness, biblical meekness is not a weakness. Biblical meekness is not a weakness. Biblical meekness are those humbled under the hand of God. Glory. Glory, glory, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Biblical meekness are those that come under, those who humble themselves under the hand of God. Whew. Isn't that a, uh, yeah, it says humbled under the hand. Yeah, isn't it like, um, there's a word, you know, like a paradox almost, it's, they're humbling, but under the hand of... <laughs> Are you getting this, church? They're humbling themselves, but under the hand of... The hands that stretched out and created the universe. They're humbling themselves under the hand of God. That is biblical meekness. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Watch out. Watch out. Praise the Lord. Watch out. You know, it is possible... Though I'm looking at all of you in this Bible study, maybe somebody watching us online, I don't know. But looking at, at the rest, those of you in this, in this room, doesn't look like any of you are capable of it. But um, I don't know, human beings, yeah, man has a, you know, you could give in to the temptation. Maybe in your workplace, maybe when you are raised up to a position where others are under you, do not manipulate the weak. Sorry, manipulate the meek. Or you'll be found fighting against God. <clears throat> Scary it is. Hallelujah. Yes? Somebody said something? No, okay. Biblical meekness... <clears throat> is, ...is those humbled under the hand of God. Those who walk by faith... Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Those who walk by faith, these are the meek. To be humbled under the hand of God means you are a person walking by. 
you are in the kitchen because you know god said be in the kitchen you are on the jumbo jet you are flying on a supersonic aircraft because god told you to go on that aircraft this is meekness biblical meekness praise the lord those who walk by faith in furnaces of fire who walk by faith in furnaces of fire those who execute god's commandments this is a tough one when god says burn it you don't debate about it you burn it that is biblical meekness when god says make a whip and chase them out and topple the tables meekness topples tables this is something very different yes this is biblical meekness humbled under the hand of god ready to execute god's commandments are you ready to execute god's commandments praise the lord praise the lord execute god's commandments those that leave room for god's vengeance when somebody says something nasty about you you don't take vengeance you just let the lord deal with it praise the lord meekness <clears throat> those who leave room for god's vengeance those that wait upon the lord are you waiting upon god for something there's a blessed place you will inherit the earth those that wait upon the lord yeah they will what does it say those who wait upon the lord they will renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as you know what is so special about the eagle's perspective he is able to see a large you know till recently many of us were not able to see this on our uh, what do you call it it wasn't possible with our photography but now with drones even a wedding looks different did you have drones for your wedding yeah you've seen the video yet you'll be like man is that my house is that what my town looks like it's uh, it's like a it's a different perspective entirely correct those that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with eagles and trust me the eagle inherits the whole earth there's you know rabbits and squirrels and and um, all sorts of creatures worried about where that eagle's eye is for wherever that eagle's eye is he has authority over it blessed are the meek they shall wherever your foot lands yes treads it becomes glory praise the lord i mean this is the gentleness of god makes us great this is uh, you see these are principles of heaven start living your life by principles of heaven not icici or hdfc you believe by the principles live by the principles of heaven no amen glory praise god those that wait on the lord those who are slow to speak hallelujah slow to slow to speak i haven't even noticed how the time has gone i don't think i any of you have either this has just been amazing anyway okay so those that are slow to say slow to speak say slow to speak slowly Let's do that again. I loved it. Let's do that again. And now, you know, let's do the same thing again, uh taking a longer time to start speaking. That's the whole intention, right? Okay. So, I'm going to tell you to say it. Take um I I will tell you when to do it. All right? I will count to 5 in my fingers. When it's 5, then you say slow. Okay. Same thing. 
Yeah, you enjoying this? Okay, anyway, I'm enjoying it. Okay, so um, let's do this. Let's be silent, everybody silent. Take your own sweet time. Take your own sweet time. If somebody asks you, how are you doing? Oh, man, this is like it set me free. Let it set it you free. When somebody, how are you doing? Take your time. I'm telling you, then you'll have varied answers. And by those varied answers, you will have deliverance also. Somebody will pray for you. Is anybody getting this? You know, sometimes I've, I've made it a sort of a decision. Somebody will ask me, how are you doing? And I'll just wait. And uh, surprisingly, they'll also wait. I don't know what's the pressure we are under to speak too fast, you know. What is this pressure we are under? No, no. Wait. He actually asked you, how are you doing? It's a commitment. So catch him, no, on the commitment. No one's getting it. Then people might ask people fewer times, how are you doing? Because you know, it's not a commitment. You know, how are you doing? Answer is, you better say the answer. The answer is, I'm fine. And let's get on with it. No, no. How are you doing is a commitment. How are you doing is a commitment. Mm, I'm having a vision of many of you not asking anybody, how are they doing? <laughs> It's a commitment about which God is going to ask you. What did you mean? How are you doing? How are you? Jesus said, let your yes be yes. Blessed are the meek. Slow to speak. Quick to. Some of us don't even listen. I, there are times people have asked me, how are you doing? And before I've said it, they've already gone. It's like they're, you know, the Kerala bullet train or whatever they play. It's like, yeah, I, I want to answer these guys, but they, they're gone. It's like, and I, and I, and I ah, they've got the next person. How are you? And, and you're just about to say something, and they're in the next person. How are you doing? And, uh, you know, it's just uh, formality. Ah, hey, no, 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 no. Yes, be yes. If you're going to ask somebody, how are they doing? It's a commitment. Because you've got to stop there. And uh, I've, I've caught many of you in that, haven't I? Yes. After you said, fine, I still stood there. I still looked in your eyes. And then I asked you the question again. Hmm. Sometimes, you know, when we say, how are you? We're so used, we're so mechanical, we just say, I'm fine. But if somebody asks, hmm, so it's a varied, uh, suddenly we, meaning comes upon us. Oh, I don't know what Slow to speak, connecting with people. You know, last week I mentioned, be careful of just being only in your, you know, the, the young people. I, I want to share it again. You know, be people that, you know, don't, you know, get stuck in only your, I will only speak to, uh, you know, this particular person. In the church, you know, uh, the meekness expressed in the church is that you go out to people. You ask, you find out how they're doing. You lay hands on people, you pray for them. You receive counsel from the elderly. Praise God. I remember, I will share this as an example for you. I remember when I had my first child. Her name is Gabriela. She's sitting on this side. I remember when I had my first child. And you know, there's this first child syndrome for all parents. This is the second child, so he doesn't know much about it. It's the uh, first child syndrome. My daughter knows about it. She expects the same treatment even now. Anyway, so moving on. Did you get it? No. Okay. Oh, some of you did. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> she's like, Acha, please leave me alone. <laughs> so, I, I had the first child and, uh, and we as a family, you know, and then you're running pillar to post. You, have, you know, if there is one mosquito flies in the diagonal direction of your baby, you're like, what to do? <laughs> And, I, and uh, all sorts of things. Of course, you, you, you're worried about this, that, and the other. And then, see. I went and spoke to a man of God, elder. Say elder. elder. Say elder. elder. Praise God for elders in the faith. 
Praise God for elders in the faith. The very special people. Very special people. Hmm? Sometimes they look like your parents. They're still special. Say amen. amen. If they're in the faith, if they're elders in the faith, it's very special. Access the wisdom God has given them. You know, so one man gave me this advice, an elder in the faith. He said, And now they go When you have your second child, you'll be fine. Some of you who haven't had children yet I have no idea what I'm talking about. That's okay, no problem. It'll, it'll, it'll dawn upon you. Man, the second child grows up by himself. It's like a miracle has happened. Huh? Another man of God, elderly man of God, set me free. And after that, I received so much money. I've got your attention now is that money word has come. Huh? This, this man of God, I, uh, you know, elderly man of God, I, I went and spoke to him and he gave me a revelation. From then on, I have made a ton of cash. Glory. Everybody's like, it's a scandalous situation. <laughs> I know I'm not afraid of the scandalous situation. I'm telling you, what was the revelation? What was that revelation this man of God gave me? You want to know? Huh? No, you don't want to know. What he gave me as a revelation was, <clears throat> it came up to me. It's like these are the subject of movies, I'm telling you. This, this should be the stuff that gets all that, you know, limelight and makeup and everything. Because, you know, this is so glorious. And he opened his mouth. Praise God. That's what happens. Yes? When a man of God, when a child of God opens his mouth and lets the Holy Spirit speak, it's the same thing. Jesus went up the mountain, opened his mouth and spoke to his disciples. And history changed. Praise God. So, he opened his mouth and he said, just out of the blue. And in my heart was the, um, what do you call, I was going through the... The crunch of things, you know, the numbers and the, all this was going on inside my heart. Who knew about that? Jesus knew about that. So Jesus opened the elderly man's voice. This is the problem with young people. Don't be a dodo. Many a times Jesus wants to open the elderly person's mouth in your life. Oh, this is so controversial. I mean, it's controversial among the young. The old are like chilled. Yeah, I knew that. Because, you know, the old will have the experience where they finally went to the elderly person <laughs> and received a word from God, you see. Okay, anyway. Glory. Praise the Lord. Let that, let that rebellious spirit out. We don't need it. We don't need it. We don't need it. We don't need it. Yeah, we need a meek spirit. I can't hear amens. Meekness is what we want. That's all we want. Submitted to God, submitted to the people of God, submitted to the Holy Spirit. That's what we want. So this man, I, are you still there? Are you still interested in what he told me? Yes. Praise God. And uh, those of you that haven't had children yet, this puts you under responsibility. Do you still want to hear? Not too sure now. <laughs> I love the, earlier it was say, say, say. Now it's like, hmm? Uh, he, he just whispered in my ear, have as many children as you want. The bills are God's responsibility. Ben has come alive. <laughs> it's like, amen, amen. Have as many children as you want. You includes husband and wife. Okay. Have as many children as you want. The bills are God's responsibility. See, this is what, I, I met another older person. I'm loving this. Um, I'm sure the Spirit of God is in it. I, I met another older person, and that person said, look at the street. Hmm? It looks like the, the people who have the largest number of children are the ones that are on the, have you noticed? And they're all growing up. Hey, surprise. They're all? 
Are they growing up? You bet your bottom dollar, they're growing up. God is good. God is good. He provides. There's enough. Coming this side, you know, we will have a conversation about population explosion. It's a lie of the devil. It's a lie of the devil. Internet, listen to me. It's a lie of the devil. There's no issue of overpopulation. The whole population of this, of this earth, given a certain amount of property, yes, a certain amount of property, can all fit in the UK. Blessing is like, no, 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 we have enough people there. <laughs> Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> he was just laughing anyway there. So. <laughs> oh. You've never heard that statistic, have you? I remember the first time I heard it, I was like, are they piled up into <laughs> to space or something? And in fact, the person, yeah, the person who shared it also said, you're probably imagining they're piled up to the space, you know, to reach space itself. No. They have a certain amount of area. This earth, the earth is huge. It is humongous. Get on a train and travel, you know, just outside of, I think in Kerala, what the, the problem is, there's so many trees. Yeah, just step outside of Kerala and discover Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh. It's correct only Pradesh. <laughs> Pradesh upon Pradesh. It's just, it's just land and land. In fact, the person traveling with me, uh, you know, a uh, good friend of mine, Abby. So uh, he, was, he was sharing how, you know, there's lots of land all over India. Yeah. There's so much land. There are people in Assam, uh, you know, who would love to give you acres of land for just a few lakhs. Hey, how can you wonder? How did we get here? Yes. Listen to wisdom. Submit to the Holy Spirit. Submit to the Holy Spirit. Submit to the Holy Spirit. Have as many children as you want. Praise God. Have as many children as you want. The Lord will supply. Praise God. Can I hear a praise God? Praise God. They shall inherit the earth. Those who wait upon the Lord. Slow to speak. Slow to anger. Quick to listen. Compassionate. Hmm. The meekness that Jesus is talking about is a, a people that are compassionate. Are you a compassionate person? Jesus wants compassion. The same compassion he had. It, it causes change in others. That's that gentleness, glory. Gentleness is fertile soil for others to grow. Examine your life. I want to make it a, a, a I want to tell you guys who are young, man, make it a, a decision in your life that throughout your, your um, what do you call, junctions, in your, you'll always examine, am I helping somebody to grow? Am I helping someone to grow? It is a quality of meekness. Uh, uh, meekness uh, is an environment in which others grow. Others must grow. Make that a decision. Make it a decision that uh, orphans will grow. Pray that somebody, um, you know, in, a, in, a, in whatever condition, they will grow around you. Praise the Lord. Somebody has a vision to minister to orphans. The Holy Spirit saying, yes, yes, go ahead. Fertile soil for others to grow. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. The ultimate um, uh, example of, of a choice and, and uh, people being in, in the opposite sides of this is um, found at the governor's palace in Scripture. One was Jesus, and the other was Pontius Pilate. Yes, two men faced each other. I'm going to read this as I'm going to close. I want to read this and, and uh, see, um, you know, it's incredible. Two men faced each other. This is from a person named R. Kent Hughes. Wonderful Bible teacher, by the way, R. Kent 
Hughes. He said, two men faced each other on the pavement before the governor's palace. One was Jesus Christ, the meekest man who ever lived. And the other was Pontius Pilate, a man of extraordinary pride. Some of us are, are have a very wrong idea about Pontius Pilate. He was not some, in the power time in Malayalam, there is, huh? He was not helpless, no. God had forewarned him. God had reached out to him. And uh, that's right. He had all the time in the world to change, but he chose political rightness over rightness before God. That's a terrible condition. Don't think that politically, political rightness is a good place to be. Pontius Pilate was politically correct. The other was Pontius Pilate, a man of extraordinary pride. Oh, Lord. When Jesus says, blessed are the meek, he is cursing human pride. See the flip side, yes? When there's a blessedness, there's a curse. And if you think, and I have found it very interesting. I'm not sure if you know that there is, uh, there is a list of curses as well. There is. That Jesus said. We are, we are very familiar with the Beatitudes, but we don't know that there is a list of curses as well. Do you know where that is? No, no, no. No, no. It's in the New Testament. I know you'd love It's there in the Old Testament. Yes, correct. It is there in the New Testament. It's there. In the Sermon on the Plain. We will, we will look at it Later on, if you're really interested, go check it out. If you don't know what the Sermon on the Plain is, <laughs> you must know. Okay. So there's a curse on pride. It must be a prayer that you offer daily. Lord, keep me away. Destroy wicked pride within me. And you can say amen to that. It must be a prayer you offer daily. It's something you should examine yourself daily. I was so blessed to meet a couple uh, recently that, that said it's one of their constant prayers. Lord, keep us humble. Amen. Keep us humble. No matter what the size of our bank account is, keep us hum humble. Someone say amen. You know, I, I realize, you know, and someone was sharing with me, and it's a fact. The greater your bank account grows, it has a certain weird effect on you, doesn't it? I'm seeing quite a few of you shake your heads, but some of you that shake your heads, I'm not sure you have much in your bank. But, <laughs> but um, yeah. Let me tell you now itself, before you start making money, you know, God is going to prosper you. You can say amen. God is going to prosper you. But make these decisions early in life. Make these decisions. Take these teachings of Jesus very seriously. Very seriously. Make that decision. I will not let my bank account change my nature. I will flow with the Holy Spirit. That's a spectacular decision. Spectacular decision. Amen. You know, I knew a man of God fantastic exercise that he used to do is he decided, he was a man of God, he, he decided that uh, every 10th check, I can't remember what, what, I don't know if he was doing alternate checks, he decided he would not, if somebody blessed him with checks, you know, people used to bless him at that time, this was some maybe close to 18 years ago, so people used to bless him with checks, and he decided that randomly he would not even look at the amount and just tear the check. It's a decision he personally made. Something the Holy Spirit gave him very personally. Don't you think it's brilliant? No. There's only one person shaking. Two people shaking their heads. The rest of you are not. I need to process this. <laughs> I had the same effect when I first heard it. I was a man of God aspiring in Bible college. Yeah. In, in Bible college and listening to this man of God, he broke my heart. <laughs> Seriously, that's exactly what happened. Did any hearts break here tonight? <clears throat> I 
and i i discussed it with myself for at least a month idu seri aanu idu seri aanu and the spirit of god was haunting me with the teaching glory that's why you need to make a decision every third check give the whole thing to the church someone was vigorously shaking his head i won't tell you who it is <laughs> hey man it's a good decision if if it's a decision by the holy spirit praise god praise god do you want to be the widow that will be remembered for eternity she gave everything she had did it go well with her you better believe it she probably by the end of her life probably she owned a thousand ships at least a thousand cows and if you think owning thousand cows is some small thing a hey, thousand cows who do you know how much a cow costs praise the lord you know let these principles of meekness glory don't become like pontius pilate i want to hear an amen is is a real danger we can be you know so calculating washing our hands so calculating you know trying to find a back door let's just whip him and let him go it's all pontius pilate behavior trying to find a back door compromise not completely obey god not declare this is truth what is truth this is truth declare this is truth glory praise the lord blessed are the meek they shall inherit so fantastic blessing over our lives let's receive it let's follow the path of meekness how many of you decide to follow the path of meekness i need hands i need hands how many of you decide to follow the path of meekness listen to me carefully the rest of you keep your hands up don't put it down let some lactic acid flow keep your hands up hmm jesus said blessed are the meek for they shall i'm talking to this young man he shall they shall yeah i can't hear you inherit the earth so how many of you want to be meek choose the path of meekness yes choose the path of meekness praise god you can put your hands down god bless you choose the path of meekness submission to the holy spirit glory this week the holy spirit may ask you to give everything you've got this week the holy spirit may ask you to give everything you've got the meek are ready the meek are ready if you're not feeling ready something is somewhere needs to be fixed the meek are ready <clears throat> glory glory praise god you love this teaching do you love this teaching it's just, you have no choice it's jesus teaching it's jesus teaching no my teaching it's jesus teaching and if you you know it's like um, you know i recently spoke to somebody and i i spoke about the widow we'll close quickly this is this is amazing um i spoke we 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 were having this conversation i spoke about the widow who gave everything she had and uh, this person very quickly with great bible knowledge told me that was just one person that was just <clears throat> and then suddenly not because i had such stupendous bible knowledge but the holy spirit suddenly awakened within me and suddenly reminded me that a group of 3000 plus people anybody know where i'm going where am i going acts chapter 2 a group of 3000 people were led by the holy spirit to sell everything and place it at the yeah the disciples feet today this is an alien practice isn't it if you look at it huh scary it is it looks like a foundational behavior ouch the meek are ready i'm 
hoping to hear a resounding yes, so praise God. The meek are ready. If God says left, they turn right. The meek are ready. If God says left, they turn. If God says turn right, they're ready to turn. Right. Glory to God. Glory to God. Some great miracles are coming. The Spirit of God is expressly going to speak to some of you like this. And the miracles are on the way. You hear the Spirit of God. It will be Jesus. You, you'll have a vision. Glory. Visions will come upon you. Where the Spirit of God, because you're ready. Because you're ready. You want to be humbled in the hand of God. Praise the Lord. God will bless you. God will bless you. God will bless you. Amen. God will bless you. Hmm. Not a drop of water is forgotten. Blessed are the meek. They shall inherit. You know, go today, um, you know, on YouTube you'll find this thing. It's, uh, I think it's uh, probably four, six, eleven hour clip. And it's basically video of the earth as it's spinning, uh, taken from the, um, from the space station. Go take a look at that and then say, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. It is better to obey God. It is better to obey God. It is better to obey God. Not your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. Obey God. Church, obey God. Great shall be your reward. Amen. Great shall be your reward. You shall shine like stars. That's what the scripture says. You shall shine like stars. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you.